Roller coasters perform extreme maneuvers such as inversions and experience strong moments of negative g-forces. With all this movement, one has to wonder if there's any risk of the ride coming off of the tracks. Roller coaster designers think about these same things when creating rides. Accordingly, rides are designed with a wheel assembly rather than just one wheel that rides on top of the track. A roller coaster wheel assembly consists of three sets of wheels. Road wheels, which are typically the largest wheels, ride on the top of the track. Road wheels may consist of one or two wheels that support the weight of the train and the riders under normal conditions. They're also frequently in contact with the track when the train is at its maximum speed. This typically means they are the largest wheels on a roller coaster, as the larger they are, the slower they can spin and the less heat they will produce. Their larger size also allows them to absorb more heat, ultimately reducing wear and tear on the wheels. The next set of wheels are the side friction wheels. These may consist of one or two wheels depending on the ride, and these wheels will ride on the inside or the outside of the rail. These wheels are in place to keep the train on track when it performs maneuvers that push the train side to side on the track. The position of these wheels on the inside or outside of the track depends on the track's design. As on some designs, it's not possible to place these wheels on the outside, and on others it's not possible to place them on the inside. The final wheel making up the wheel assembly is the uplift wheels. These were first invented in the 1910s and turned out to be one of the largest roller coaster innovations of all time as they allow roller coaster trains to experience strong negative forces and perform inverted maneuvers as they hold the train to the bottom of the track. Rides will have either one or two of these wheels per assembly, with the largest benefit of having multiple wheels being redundancy, as in the unlikely event that one wheel were to catastrophically fail, there is no risk of the train itself derailing. On some rides, the side friction and uplift wheels do not make contact with the track, while on others they contact the track for the entire time. Wheels will be designed to touch the track at all times on rides with tight tolerances for their track design, such as most newer roller coasters. This allows for a smoother overall ride. Roller coasters with less tight track tolerances will use side friction and uplift wheels that do not make contact with the track, as the track fluctuates very slightly in size, and if these wheels were designed to constantly contact the track, the ride would run the risk of valleying or not completing the ride layout and stalling somewhere on the ride layout. These wheel assemblies are connected to an axle of some kind where they're mirrored across the track, creating a device that is stuck to the track and cannot be lifted or thrown off of it. Roller coasters will generally use one of these axles per car, with the exception of the very front or rear car where two are needed for stability. Though some rides, such as those with very long cars, will use two axles per car. This design presents some problems, such as when a train needs to be removed from the track for some reason. Under normal conditions, roller coasters feature specialized transfer tracks that can remove trains without actually removing them from the track itself. In cases where the roller coaster train needing to be removed is not in a normal position, such as if it stalls at a low point on the track due to poor weather, it can be difficult to remove the train. Some roller coasters are designed with this in mind and have easily removable uplift wheels that allows the trains to be lifted away and placed back at a recoverable place on the track layout. Though the largest changes in roller coaster wheel design came over 100 years ago, innovation is still occurring. Recently, manufacturers have designed new wheels that are designed to dissipate the large amount of heat produced by the tallest and fastest roller coasters that are being designed today. For example, Zamperla designed the wheels on Top Thrill 2 to be larger than on any other roller coaster, as on this ride the trains are expected to travel at over 100 miles per hour for extended periods of time. Intamin has also introduced a new wheel design for the upcoming coaster Falcon's Flight. These wheels are designed to dissipate heat away from the wheel in the same way that a heat sink does. The part of a roller coaster's wheel that runs on the track is also generally made out of polyurethane which allows for a smoother ride with less friction. This also allows roller coaster wheels to be remanufactured when the polyurethane eventually wears out. However, there are many different compounds of polyurethane that have different effects on roller coasters. For example, some wheels may be made from a stiffer compound that allows the train to travel faster during periods of cold weather, while others may be softer or designed to be more durable. With all that being said, the future of roller coaster design continues to be written and innovation in the wheel and wheel assembly design area will be a part of that. If you have any questions about roller coaster design or operation that I've not yet made a video on, feel free to ask in the comments below. 
As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.